Welcome to Looking for the Lost, a podcast dedicated to spotlighting missing and murdered cases and bringing clues to cold cases through psychic detective work. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Looking for the Lost, a podcast dedicated to spotlighting missing and murdered cases. I'm Kay Reynolds, and I am so glad you joined us today. I am joined by Jean July. Hello, everybody. And Asia Kim. Hey. And today's podcast is going to be a little bit different than the usual ones. Today, we're, we are going to have what we call a chick chat. We're going to extend that version of our regular podcast and talk about whatever blows our way. So thank you for joining us. Sit back and have a good listen. I didn't even know they sold spells. I didn't. Well, you know what? I've been on websites where people who uh, claim that they have spells, you know, that you buy the spells. Some of those people I've seen have been, um, uh, you know, practice hoodoo and which is not voodoo so yeah, that's different. the difference mm -hmm. it's very different um you know hoodoo being uh, a mixture of it's it's root work what we call it you know in the black community it's like root work you hear that term like somebody's got roots on you where they're working with elements of the earth but it's a mixture of a little bit of voodoo but mixed with I, I don't know i think i want to say native american uh uh stuff as well it's like it's just kind of a culmination so it's not it's not like this pure practice it's not a pure practice it's not like it it derived from one particular culture it's almost it's a mix of cultures in that and so i've seen it where websites where you know you sell that uh these spells and, and what can you tell me again what's that called hoodoo hoodoo yeah h-o-o-d-o-o -O -O. so ladies and gentlemen if you are just now joining us we are just having an open and frank conversation about spells um yep. something that none of us do but it's often out there in the media and so um Keep going, Jean. Well, I mean, <laughs> now you got my interest. I know. Well, if if the definition, if I had to say the definition is, but as I'm looking on there, it's it's a religion practiced in parts of the Caribbean and southern U.S. and characterized by sorcery and spirit possession. Um, and what I what I disagree with with part of the the definition is is that they include voodoo in it even though it's like it's taking parts of voodoo but which is actually called voodoo and using it in this sorcery thing and i i remember um i think i was mentioning that you know i saw people selling who were hoodoo practitioners selling spells online and you know if you if you want your love back or you want money you know i have spells and you you know, and, and they'll send you some stuff in the mail. Um, you know, I, I know while I was visiting New Orleans and I walked into the uh, Marie Laveau Museum and mm. that museum is so interesting. I actually, it was so much energy in there. I couldn't stay. <laughs> I had to like, wow. oh, we get out. So um, they were selling what they call little grigri. So grigris are they're they're kind of like it's like a spell kind of that it, that's in it, but it has uh properties, you know, there's something in these little bags, you know, or something in the grigri to and it's almost like a charm. And um so it was it it was real interesting, you know, and that that's that's that that whole mix of stuff and even if you walked into marie laveau's museum you're going to see everything you're going to see 
uh, things on witchcraft, uh, or Wicca, you're going to see stuff for voodoo, you're going to see stuff for Ifa, for Yoruba, you're going to see like this whole combination and lots of books. And uh, it's it's like when you walk in, and I love to share this experience because I walked in, I went twice, actually, I went with a uh, uh, in the same week. And I went with some friends of mine and um, this guy was working on some, you know, putting these gris together. He was at the counter and he kept doing this. And he kept doing this. He goes, oh my gosh. He said, I shouldn't have worn black today because they're starting to mess with me right now. So he's like, shrink, shrink. And then me being the sensitive that I was before I got stepped into this, um, you know, practice of, you know, my mediumship and stuff, I started feeling like this tickling all up here. And I'm like, stop, you know, what is that? It's like feeling all this tickling. It's like, stop, stop. <laughs> you know? And it was like, oh, okay, this, this energy is a little too heavy for me. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I need to step out. I need to step out. But you just saw everything. I mean, you, you saw uh, even Japanese uh, deities that they had there as well. So they, I mean, they wow. covered everything. They covered everything. And, and New Orleans is the place to go. Oh man, if isn't you want, ever. if you're into this kind of stuff, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I, I will confess, I don't, I don't know much about any of any of that. I find it fascinating though if you go back in history and you look at. Um, especially the the indigenous peoples around the world and, and the practices that they had, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I think we could we could learn some things yes. from going back into the history and understanding things. Yeah. 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 Well, but, they're not just empty gestures, even in any, um, you know, religious thing like Catholicism. There are these... these they are all supposed to mean something, but sometimes mm -hmm. those meanings get lost through time or they get altered a little bit. So, um, yeah, yeah. kind of interesting. You know, it, and it, it's interesting though, because the indigenous have their, their rituals, the things that they do, not that far away from what we do in religious settings as well. We, yeah. you know, most religions have their rituals and the things that they do. So it's, um, quite quite interesting i will tell you this um i found it remarkably uh i found a remarkable connection between shamanism and catholicism mm -hmm. which i didn't expect to find mm -hmm. and um you can see it in uh some of the the, the ritual aspect the rituals the ritual yeah. aspect because the catholic church has really ancient ritual and a lot of that, when I was reading about just learning how some of the uh, activities or the way in which they do their worship or the way in which the, um, the ancient shamans, not the modern, uh, everybody does it different now, but, um, but in, that, in that setting, how closely connected it felt to the Catholic rituals. Mm -hmm. And it was specific ones. I was watching, I can't remember, it was a, it was, uh, oh yeah, oh, I'll, I'll give it a plug. Midnight Mass on uh, Netflix. Oh God, which, I love that movie. <laughs> that, was, that was a wild series. But oh, when man. you, and, and when you, but when you watch it, um, that's what I found so fascinating. I had, you know, I haven't been a practicing Catholic for, for the longest time, but seeing all of the, the, uh, you could feel it actually when they would do certain rituals. And then I, I I didn't understand as a young Catholic when I would be in church. I always felt that that was like the most important part of things. I would get bored when the sermon came, but all of the ritual and those aspects, they drew me and they felt uh, they had a depth and a weight to them in a different kind of way that was not just a person putting their thing like a, like a, a sermon might be, a sermon might be more opinion or a thought of a person, but these particular ceremonies were not. And I saw them with brand new eyes. I saw my, um, the faith that I grew up in and brand new eyes. And 
I loved the fact that there were so many connections that yeah. that they it actually made the ritual of Catholicism make more sense to me. And I know folks out there that are Catholic. I'm not saying this in a disrespectful way, just so you know. So please don't be upset. I'm not equating them, but I am saying that there are aspects of one and the other that feel like they are connected. And I felt a connection between them. And that's just for me. It's not for everybody, but I did feel that. Yeah. 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 Um, Definitely, there are practices that are very animistic. Mm -hmm. And with Ifa, uh, which, you know, I take, I do practice uh, parts of Ifa, uh, uh, Yorba, in some, some places called Yoruba, which is actually the culture and the people from Nigeria. And uh, the Ifa is a system. And so the animist mystic part of it is recognizing uh, all things and honoring mm -hmm. the animals, honoring the earth, honoring the uh, things from the earth and realizing that everything has an energy. Everything has energy. And that energy has a purpose. And so mm -hmm. it's honoring that the purpose of those things that are that we see every day, that we don't realize that there's something behind it. You know, that's why it's so important that we really recognize Mother Earth because of what she provides. And, you know, we we need trees. We need trees. We need all kinds of things. We need, we need water. But the energy that comes from all of that is about recognition. And, um, yeah. you know, and so the rituals, as you were saying, like, I know if we talk about, uh, you know, in Yoruba, uh, when the slaves came over to the Caribbean, in particular, and also to Brazil, they brought the practices from West Africa. Some brought the practices of voodoo, which is from Benin, and some brought the practices of Ifa, which was from Nigeria in Ghana area. And what they had to do in order to survive is that they were forced, the slaves were forced to become Catholic to renounce their religion uh, and to convert and still remain a slave, but it would save your life, basically. But however, in Yoruba uh, or, or what some would call Santeria, what they recognized in the Catholic Church were all these saints. And the saints were very similar to their, the deities that they recognized. Uh -huh. See? And so they were able to disguise their uh, orishas, as, it, as we call them, orishas, uh, behind the saints. So in certain eras, Santa Barbara would be, was actually Shango in certain areas, you know. Um, uh, Saint Lazarus is Obaluaye or Obaluaye, see. So they were able to incorporate that and, but then, you know, still maintain, um, I guess just what they call syncretism, mixing the two together in a lot of instances. So you have those that practice pure Ifa pure voodoo, uh, and then you have those that have syncretized, you know, wow. the, the Catholic faith with yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was similar. I, I'm sorry. Oh. I was yeah, was okay. I, I, who's on first? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've just been educated a little bit there. That's all new information for me. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Interesting. Very that great. was how they did the same in uh, Catholicism in South America, because that's that was stronger there. Uh, the mm -hmm. conversion, not just to um, uh, Christianity, but it was actually Catholicism. Um, and that that was something that I think that the church actually did in order to draw 
people to to the church is to give it a sense of familiarity even even uh the hymns you know back when i was studying music music history um they were talking about the early hymns i some of those were drinking songs (laughs) (laughs) they were but but that's what the people were singing and those were the melodies that. (laughs) that they knew so they just would take these old melodies does this sound familiar to anyone taking an old style of music and putting some modern words on it or something that's associated to your subject and that's how you bring people in and that's an that's that's yeah, a really wow. old timey way of doing stuff because that's an old trick they're doing it even now yeah. <laughs> and wine wine has always been the beverage of choice if you go way back in time yes wine and beer wine and beer wine and people beer. didn't and drink it, water it, and it water was, was dangerous. Water was was dangerous, and so mm-hmm. even the children, you know, mm-hmm. and some countries still today, you know, that it's okay for the children to have wine at their meals and things. So, yeah, it, you know, uh, it's the country that I might would like to move to one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, they, just, a, just a thought out there. I don't, you know, I, I don't know. I think they mix it with water now. So I know that they do yeah. in certain areas. They mix it with water for, the for children. For they the would to, like, to don't kind water, of uh-uh. don't water it down my drink. Okay, yeah, don't, <laughs> you don't don't, don't water drink. it down. Uh-uh. Don't water it down my drink. no no. Don't do I that. Remember back in the day when I was putting myself through school. So I was waiting tables, and um, I was working in a downtown hotel. So there were a lot of tourists coming in, and. These two little kids came in. They couldn't be these two little guys. They couldn't have been more than 12, 13 years old. And they sit down and the one looks at me and he says, I'll have a lager. What? And I'm like, <laughs> well, I was just going to say, me, may Germany. I see your ID? And he just looked at me like ID. And I said, you have to be 21 to drink alcohol in this city and yeah. the shock on that child's face well, in in germany they used to always say that if if you could see over the bar you could order really alcohol. yeah <laughs> that's what they used to say i don't know if that was true but i know that drinking was you know with the younger ones it was not that big of a deal with especially at mealtime as well and in france it's quite common for for the kids to have a glass of wine with their meal. Right. You know, so, right. um, but yes, in Germany it, it was. And um, yeah, I remember being on a flight from, uh, I think I was from Frankfurt, um, coming back to the States. And there was a, a, a teenage boy, he looked like he was about 14 or 15, brought his own alcohol. He, he you know, he came prepared for the flight. <laughs> And uh, he got stopped by the flight attendants. Wow! And he was he was shocked, and I was, and I was just kind of chuckling under my breath, going, "He ain't in Germany anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're on an American flight, <laughs> you know." And plus, they didn't. Uh, they he he wasn't supposed to. Um, bring his own alcohol if he had if he was of right. age he would have right. to purchase from the airline yeah so but i thought it was so funny it was like <laughs> it must have been back before they were you know x-raying everything in your bag and you couldn't bring fluid on and all that stuff no 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 it that was, was during it it was after all of that oh my uh, gosh yeah but uh, but you know the little bottles you, oh, could get, you can bring those little bottles on the ones you could fit in a quartz yeah yeah the yeah. little one you know the little take a shot clap you know <laughs> yeah you could you could do that but it was funny i i was kind of laughing he was shocked though he's oh he was poor guy well but, yeah <laughs> go on well uh well i want to get back to what you were saying about Asia about, you know, how the rituals were adopted into the church. Mm-hmm. And, and that's true with, with the, the Celtic religion as well. Mm. Um, you know, because uh, there were things that actually were adopted into Christianity, you know, like say Easter, right? We are all about, you know, the bunny rabbits and, 
right? right? And actually, even though we know Easter is really about well, I was raised Catholic, so that was a big deal then. Yeah, so it's about, <laughs> Easter was a huge holiday. You got the new dress, you got the Easter shoes, yeah, yeah. same here. Hat. Same here. Same we got here. the whole thing. Same here. Yeah. And, but then you would go on these egg hunts. So actually, you know, like with Easter, I do know that it was adapted from uh, another religion in order, like you said, to gain the population of the Catholic membership. The congregation and because the the bunny actually represents fertility and so they just kind of i don't know how how did they know thing. about eggs back then how did they know about eggs you know for when fertility you, that's what i'm talking about that connection right <laughs> right right it's like the egg the bunny you know and all that was just put into uh you know just kind of part of the the landscape now you know uh I don't even know if most people even know what Easter is really all about outside of the Easter bunny and Easter the bunny for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. And that's the part that they adapt, you know, that people will adopt uh, versus what, you know, why we celebrate Easter. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting, the same thing with Christmas, you know, the evergreen mm -hmm. that came from, you know, a, Germany. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Germany had a lot to do with the Christmas holiday. That's where yeah. the Christmas tree came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. and the pagans. It's from the pagan religion. It's from the pagans. Mm -hmm. Where am I getting Germany? I think, no, it, it I think is. Germany has something to do with it, but pagans. Chris are... Kringle is Santa. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it, you're right, Kay. It's the, it's from the pagan religions that was yeah. you know, adapted into, you know, the Catholicism and Christianity, I should say, because it's when you're so Catholicism. Yes. Um, Isn't that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Things that make you go, hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, so ladies, the, the, we were supposed to talk about mediumship and psychic today. We are, we're not even. We haven't even touched on that. I mean, we but, we but that's okay. We we'll okay. work our way around the world and get there eventually. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's the now. way we roll, right? That's <laughs> it's right. The way we roll. So, so actually, Asia, when you were when you mentioned the movies, uh -huh. that took my mind to movies. And I was thinking about movies and psychics and mediums and and uh, whatnot. And I just want to ask you guys, of all the movies out there, because I know you guys are big movie buffs, of all the movies out there that that have a psychic or a medium as a main character or a main role in the in the film, which one is your favorite, and which one do you think best portrays? what it really is like to be one of those or to see spirit? Oh, I, I think uh, I just saw it recently too, is Ghost. I think Ghost is a really, yep. really good one. And I loved how Whoopi Goldberg's character, I, I know this isn't a spoiler for y'all out there because you must have seen it. It's an older film. Who but, hasn't? Yeah. <laughs> But, and if you haven't seen it, go watch it with different eyes. You know, if you've learned a little bit about your mediumship and your psychicness uh, as well, so you can uh, see what the connections are. But I loved how Whoopi was, she was a real psychic medium, but she was, she was funny how she was kind of playing a game there. So she gave us a little lesson on um fake psychic stuff even though mm -hmm. she was a real psychic that's what i thought was funny <laughs> she didn't realize how real she was it right? was yes. funny she, yeah. she started off as a scam right it was, it was a scam was scamming her and her sister what she was doing yeah mm -hmm. and then and then accidentally discovered that she she had something going on there yeah. you know but yeah. i i liked that show too that's that's my favorite one i think it it really does show what it's like for spirit when they do pass, especially mm -hmm. in something. And I know that on one of our chick chats and one of the episodes, we talk about 
uh, what happens when somebody passes away from trauma in a, in a yes. traumatic way, a yeah. car accident, whatever it may be. And, you know, uh, the character that Patrick Swayze played, he was in shock mm-hmm. that he was no longer alive. Yeah. And and that happens. And, and I think they did a really good job of portraying that aspect of what it's like once you leave the body and you're now back into a spirit in in the spirit world, mm-hmm. what some may go through, and then I, I my favorite one of my favorite parts is the part with the penny, yes, the, the penny oh, up yes. the penny. door, yes, and it's that that really and and the and that scene in the um in the in the subway subway where the guy was like. You know, you got to learn how to do it. And he was asking him, how do you go through that wall like that? Right. And you, you got to learn how to do it. And I I believe that. I believe that when we uh, first get back into the spirit world, that if those are things that we want to do as a spirit person, that we have to learn how to, how to do that and learn how to manipulate the energy. You know, and I remember as... Um, when my dad first passed over, my my uh, brother moved into the home where where my mom and dad were living, because uh, he they had just moved uh, uh, out of this home and had moved into a new home, and he passed away, and so my brother and his family took the old house, mm-hmm. and my dad would go there right after he passed away, and there was a an an couple incidents on it happened I think more than once where the uh the girls were in the bedroom playing and their bedroom was the bedroom where my dad was that was Mm -hmm. his bedroom when at Mm -hmm. the end of his life and pennies were flying out from underneath the bed whoa wow and every time I see the pennies moving in that show it reminds me of that you know Wow. And my brother went in and 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 just kind of played it off, and and the girls were like, "No, you don't understand the flying out from under the bed." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it it happened again, and he goes back in, and he just says, "Dad, if you're scaring, you're scaring the girls, don't do that." <laughs> wow! And it stopped. It stopped. You're and kidding! It, wow. And it just you know it just goes to show, and I, you know I know that when when my dad passed away, he was never one to be into electronics. He didn't, he wasn't a mechanic. He didn't care about any of that kind of stuff, but he became quite quickly after his passing, a master at manipulating the radio, manipulating those pennies from underneath the bed, you know, just to get our attention. Mm -hmm. And he, we, uh, he was uh, in a wheelchair, and we had a an old van with a wheelchair lift, and that was his escape out mm-hmm. of the house because he was pretty much homebound the last couple of years. And so every day, uh, it was routine that we would take him somewhere in the van. He loved to just, if even if it was just to, you know, drive and not do anything. Yeah. He'd love to be able to get out of the house and get in the van. And so that was his, his escape. And after he passed in this van, as soon as my my brother had the van and they'd go in the house and it wouldn't be five minutes and the music would be blaring in the van. Wow. No keys on. There were no, no keys. keys. What? Okay. No keys. Okay, no come on. on. Yeah. No, no keys. Right. There you go. Okay, that's no keys. That. That's good. No keys. Uh-huh. And and he he would manipulate it. And this kept happening over and over and over. So they got to where they'd get out when they would get 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 out of the van, they would flip everything off. Everything. Just flip, 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 flip. Lock it all up. Go in the house. <laughs> and what do you know? There goes the radio again. And I'm, oh, I'm like, yeah, and okay. that's you know that's what he would do, he you know, wow, and it's like that with ghosts. He had to learn how to do that, you know. But the, our loved ones will do it. 
They oh. will find a way if the ones, especially the ones who are determined, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know. And even though my dad had no inter, he he did like listening to the radio, though I will say that. But um, you know, had no interest in that flipping the lights on and off. He was really good at that. <laughs> you know, manipulating any kinds of electronics. That was his his calling sign. So if you you know. Loved ones will do that from spirit world. Yes, they, they will figure out a way to let you know, hey, I'm here. I'm with you. Yep. You know, it's me. I'm the one that's flipping the radio and changing the songs on you. I'm the one that's turning the radio on or the lights on and off and stuff. So, yeah. But it's, no. the, it's that ghost story that reminds me. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. He learned. That's he was what... a quick learner. Yeah. That's what makes it so real uh, yeah. in that way. Is Now, do you feel that um, when they're communicating, um, was your feeling uh, that of wanting to be acknowledged, of that he wanted to be, he wanted to make himself known so that everyone would know that he was there? Yes, mm-hmm. as absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And because he slowed down after once people started acknowledging him, did the incidents start to slow down some? Oh, no. They're oh still no! Happening today. They're still I love happening. it. I love no, it. He he still does those kinds of things. Not as often as what uh, he used to do, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, he has several ways of getting people's attention in the in the family. But he was um, one of the things that he did really early on is he loves to sit at the foot of the bed. So when I would go to sleep, you know, go to bed at night, I'd feel this in the bed. This The bed was kind of mm-hmm. at the foot. And I'd be going, oh, who's here? <laughs> who's here? And I, I learned quite quickly. Now, this was before I did any training, uh, before I did any training with, with mediumship. and But I knew that there was something different about me. Obviously, I've known that most of my life. I'm not mm-hmm. quite right. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, I'd feel it. And then I'd just get this sense that, yeah, this is dad. And and he became notorious for that. Sitting at the foot of the bed. He'd sit at the foot of the bed of my kids when they'd go to bed at night. And they knew it was him. Um, they'd have friends who would come over. And sometimes they the friends would sleep in, in the bed. And my kids would sleep on the couch. He'd go sit at the foot of the bed. He just, you know, watching over you. Nothing creepy, nothing creepy. Right. Just watching over. And he would do that with my mom as well. Mm-hmm. Sit at the foot of the bed. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, uh, I actually have a couple of movies that I yeah. really liked. Um, I loved The Sixth Sense. Oh, me too. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, oh that was too. great. Such a great movie. I see and, dead people. I know, right? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> it was such a great twist at the end. The twist yes. at the end was just so brilliant. And the second movie, which I don't think it got a lot of, um, you know, recognition, was a movie with Kate Blanchett called The Gift. I've seen that. Oh, I've seen that one. That was a great movie. It's a great movie, you mm-hmm. know, um, and you know, along with Ghost, of course, I love Ghost, uh, but those two movies, I remember when they came out and I was just like, wow, wow, mm-hmm. you know, Yeah. so, yeah. so the, all of you out there, if you haven't seen these movies, you go need watch to them. go watch them, go find them, go watch them because yes. they're really good, yeah. really good movies. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you saw them before you uh, opened up and if you're out there and, and you're a psychic medium and you saw this before you opened up, you can see it with new eyes now. Which is it'll what be, I'm going to do. It'll be a different kind <laughs> of movie for you. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I'm going to do yes. because now it's like I, I have a better understanding yeah. of things. And it's like, I need to go back and watch those movies again, you know, yeah. just to kind yeah. of. Those of you out there, pay attention to your loved ones. They mm-hmm. may be trying to show you some kind of sign to let you know that that they're around we mentioned a couple but there's lots of different signs that you oh can god see. yes so, i didn't even share what my mom did right after she passed oh please do very, very, very quickly and then we're gonna wrap it up oh, okay so i i came i went home 
to start arranging her funeral. And um, I, the first night I was there, you know, I stayed in the house, my dad and my brother was upstairs. And so the next day um, I got up that morning and all of a sudden there's a bird in the house. There's a bird flying around. And I'm like, how did this bird get in here? The doors were closed. The windows were not open. Mm -hmm. The flu, the, the, the fireplace was not working. It wasn't a working flu. But this bird was flying around everywhere and the bird landed in the kitchen on top yeah. of the pantry, which there was a ledge. And, she, and the bird was just there. And I'm like, how am I going to get this bird out of here? How did this bird get in here? And I was freaking out about it. And then after it just sat there for the longest time and then all of a sudden i had i decided let me just open the the front door and once i opened the front door the the bird flew out it went through the dining room through the living room out the front door and i just wonder what was that all about and i called my brother and i was telling my dad too it's like this bird got in the house i don't know how it got in the house nothing was open and it just you know boggled my mind for the longest time and then one day uh i don't know how i found this out i was reading but there's an uh an irish saying that says if a bird flies in the house it means that that loved one's is representing that loved one's soul and that they're free Oh, and letting you know that they're fine. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Didn't know that. I've never heard that. Cool. Yeah. I didn't know that Thanks either. For sharing that. Yeah. 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 Hmm. yeah. That might explain the hummingbird that I had flying around in my house. Oh, wow. Here. Yeah. Yeah. And after my father in law passed away. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those of you listening out there in podcast land or those of you who are watching us on YouTube, we're so glad that you joined us today. This um, is just an impromptu discussion. I mean, we we did kind of have a plan to talk about mediumship and psychic. But it didn't really go that way in the beginning, yeah. and that's okay. Um you know, we just roll with it and see where it, where it, where we land, where it takes us. And we're happy that you um, joined us and had a listen. Now, our next podcast is going to be the Beaumont Children Part 2. And we're going to take a look at the forensic astrology charts of that case. So you won't want to miss that. And until then, just remember, our loved ones are never truly lost. They're only hidden from our sight. God bless and thank you for listening. If you have any information regarding a missing or murder case, contact your local authorities. Join us again next time on Looking for the Lost. Our theme music is written by Lynn Willever.